It always seems like the deck of cards is stacked against us, but the Jets finally catch a break. Jeff Ulbrich knows who his wide receivers are going to be for the Senior Bowl. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets! Oh man, I love this time of year because you start to learn about all the different processes and all the little inner workings of all the prospects and all the different things that could possibly happen and hidden gems like Puka Nakua and all these different guys that wind up showing out at the Senior Bowl and then wind up having good NFL careers. We've gotten a few players of our own from the Senior Bowl, Jermaine Johnson uh, and Jeremy Ruckert. Love it. Uh, so it stands to reason that the Jets could grab someone else from the Senior Bowl this year, particularly at a position in need. Offensive line we're going to look at, wide receiver we're going to look at. Today's video is going to focus on that wide receiver group. Jeff Ulbrich is the coach of the national team, and the wide receivers were released yesterday as far as who's going to be under Ulbrich's umbrella on the national side of the Senior Bowl so I want to learn about these prospects. We're going to break them up into slot receivers and wide outside receivers because the Jets could be looking for really either one. You could get one of those types of receivers in free agency and you might be looking for another one in the draft and the Jets have to use an offensive line pick at number 10. You're going to be looking for a few more uh, players in the mid rounds here. So I'm excited to get into this. So without further ado, let's hop in to the video. The first player on our list that we have to go over is Roman Wilson the wide receiver out of Michigan. He is six foot tall, 192 pounds. He is 69% of his snaps from the slot, 31% of his snaps out wide. He's projected to run a 4-3 at the combine. This guy is blazing fast. Uh, long arms for his size. They say strong hands, so he, I guess he goes up and high points the ball a lot and uh, muscles the ball away. It's something we don't really see from Alan Lazard. That's kind of been my knock on him is he seems kind of soft, allows the ball to like come to him as opposed to hands grabbing it. Um, as far as concerns, they're mentioning drops and double catching. So maybe it bounces off his chest or it like, you know, he doesn't catch it cleanly the first time, has to catch it a second time. That's not great because that's how you wind up with, with turnovers and things like that. Uh, the projection that I've seen for him is the third round. There's only three boards that I look at that had him listed on there. Pro Football Network had him at a 55. NFL Draft Buzz had him at number 88 and Pro Football Focus had him at number 85. So the Jets do have a third round pick. So this is someone, if they wanted to consider uh, replacing and upgrading from a Cobb, this would be a, a person you could possibly look at. The next one up is Luke McCaffrey, wide receiver out of Rice. He's six foot two, 195 pounds. 71% of his snaps came from the slot, 29% out wide. Last year had 71 receptions, 992 yards, and 13 touchdowns. He is a team captain as well. You know how much that is important for our New York Jets coaching staff. Deep routes and good acceleration. This is someone that could take the top off of a defense, and we don't really have that right now. So this could definitely be a direction that the Jets try to look. Remember, they tried to get uh, a Tyree kill. Granted, that speed is just otherworldly. I don't know if this guy's gonna you know, come close to that. But uh, concerns, they say his run blocking and his yards after catch. So maybe he's just a high point or like I don't know, just a bigger bodied wide receiver. They're projecting him in the fifth round. So he's going to go a lot later. Jets don't actually have a fifth round pick this year. We have two fourth round picks and I believe a sixth round pick. So you could could pull the di pull the trigger on this guy uh, in some capacity. They have him listed on the big boards, 142 and 144 from NFL Draft Buzz and Pro Football Focus. Um, so Luke McCaffrey, we'll have to keep an eye on him. Uh, Jacob Cowan is another wide receiver out of Arizona, 80, uh, sorry, 70% in the slot, 30% out wide. He's 5'11", 175 pounds. He had 89 receptions, 868 yards, and 13 touchdowns this past year. He spent three seasons at UTEP before transferring to Arizona. He is known as a quick twitch type wide receiver. Has usage versatility all over the field. Seems like a little chess piece that you could play around with. Uh, concerns his catch radius and that he's smaller. So obviously 175 pounds is not a very big wide receiver. Uh, and his height at 5'11", is uh, that might even be like a glorified height. So we'll have to see what it actually uh, checks out as. I didn't see, I guess they had it for the Senior Bowl, and I just probably didn't list it. But um, smaller catch radius, obviously, you know, shorter arms, things of that nature. You're not going to have as big of a target. But Aaron Rodgers is really freaking good, and he can fit a window through, a, you know, fit a ball through a tight window. So maybe that's not, a, not an issue. He's known as a strong route runner. So quick separation maybe helps us when the offensive line is not playing up to snuff. Uh, so something, something to keep an eye on. They have him listed as probably about a third or fourth round pick. Looks like uh, Pro Football Focus has him at number 100. NFL Draft Buzz has him at 103. Uh, keep an eye on him. Another captain as well. Team captains. We're talking about this consistently. Keep an eye on those guys. 
Uh, the final slot guy we're going to take a look at is Malachi Corley, the wide receiver out of Western Kentucky. 5'11", 210 pounds. He spent 86% of his time in the slot, only 14% out wide. 79 receptions last year, 985 yards with 11 touchdowns. He had 11 touchdowns in each of the last two seasons for Western Kentucky. Led the nation in yards after catch in 2022. And his acceleration gets him up to top speed very, very quickly. That is an, an incredibly attractive option uh, if you're the New York Jets. Route running needs a little bit of improvement. This guy, I, honestly, he seems a little bit like Debo-esque at, at a smaller statue. He's just, he's tougher to bring down and he just, he can be used in the screen game. He can be used in, you know, a few different, a uh, few different ways. Now, this is one of the higher drafted or higher prospect type players here. Uh, CBS Sports has him at 33rd overall. Um, Pro Football Network, 70. NFL Draft Buzz, 83. Pro Football Focus, 95. So you're looking at somewhere between the top of the second round, according to CBS Sports, all the way down to like end of the third round. So this guy could become available for the New York Jets. Uh, we got a, a little bit of a half and halfer here. This is Ricky Pearsall, wide receiver out of Florida. He was listed as 56% of his snaps in the slot and 44% out wide. So I kind of threw him in the middle of this whole uh, big board here. He's six foot one, 192 pounds. He had 65 receptions, 963 yards and four touchdowns last year. He transferred from Arizona State before ending up in uh, in Florida. I believe he had two years in Florida before, uh, after transferring from Arizona State. Natural ability to separate from the slot is what they're talking about here. Known for his circus catches and his projection is a third round grade, which is really surprising that he's a third round grade and CBS Sports, Pro Football Network, and NBC Sports don't have any <laughs> draft grade on this guy. Uh, but NFL Draft Buzz is 77 and Pro Football Focus is a 72. So something to keep an eye on if you want a little more versatility out of the player uh, that you're drafting. Maybe you don't want specifically a slot and you want someone that could kind of be a little bit more of a hybrid. Uh, the next players that we're going to take a look at, we've got three that come in at wide receiver for a wide out perspective. Uh, the first one we're going to take a look at is Javon Baker, the wide receiver out of UCF. Six foot one, 208 pounds. He spent 27% of his time in the slot and 73% out wide. He was a transfer from Alabama and had 52 receptions, 30, uh, 1,139 yards, and seven touchdowns this past season. He's known as a high-effort player. They said separation could be a question mark, so it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, at the Senior Bowl, can he get away from some top-end talent? Got to take a look at how he you know, does the one-on-ones, I guess, against some of those, those corners. Uh, route running needs improvement. That's probably where you see that lack of separation if he's just kind of trailing off a little bit. Uh, in terms of, you know, his routes or he's not as crisp, that could lead to, to less separation. Uh, lacks vertical speed and might be a good depth piece. So when I see him sitting around 108 to 191 on the two big boards for Pro Football Focus and NFL Draft Buzz, he's not someone super high on my list. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but, you know, who knows? If middle of the rounds, maybe you got to add someone else. I don't know if this guy's necessarily an improvement over, like, the undrafted guys that we had last year in Gibson and Brownlee. Um, the next player up, I want to take a look at Devontas Walker, North Carolina wide receiver. He's six foot three, 200 pounds. This cat's projected to go in the second round. He had 41 receptions, 699 yards, and seven touchdowns this past year. He is a deep threat, tracks the ball very well down the field. He has an enormous catch radius for that frame that he's got. Uh, his concerns would be route running and body catcher. So this guy's more of a deep threat kind of go up and get it type uh, type of cat. He's projected to go, like I said, second round. Pro Football Focus had him at 34, NBC Sports 27, NFL Draft Buzz 50, NFL, uh, uh, Pro Football Network 75. So it seems like this guy is going to be someone we got to keep an eye on for a top-end player that maybe potentially could slip through into the third round. Uh, I I like him a lot. He's, he's my second favorite receiver on this uh, little list we have here. But the number one, the big kahuna that I want to talk about, this one's exciting for me because I love me some legacy uh, lineage stuff. This is Brendan Rice, wide receiver out of USC. He's six foot three, 210 pounds. He is the son of Hall of Fame great Jerry Rice. Spent 12% of his snaps in the slot, 88% out wide. He has 45 receptions, 791 yards, and 12 touchdowns this past year. He is explosive off the line. Very, very fun wide receiver to watch. 
Uh, high caliber body control is how they list him. And then they have him penciled in as like a third round draft pick. I think he could sneak into the second round. When you have that name tied to you, a Marvin Harrison Jr. going up at the top of the draft, possibly top three, top four pick. Brendan Rice, maybe the same type of lineage. We've seen some good success out of the Bosa brothers, out of the Manning brothers, out of the uh, the Watt brothers. It seems like the Kelsey brothers, like literally go through the whole list as you get lower and lower, not lower and lower, but as you as you go through it, Chris Jenkins' son is coming out this year. You had Asante Samuel Jr. come out. Patrick Sertan Jr. came out. Like there's just, there's so many good players that come from NFL legacy families that this is someone I would strongly consider if he shakes out to the third round where the Jets draft pick is. This is someone that has a really, really high upside. Or if the Jets can trade down and somehow acquire another pick, this is someone I'm going to keep my eyes on for sure. I'm looking forward to it. So guys, I want to hear from you. What are your top players that you see from this list of players that Coach Ulbrich is going to be overseeing at the Senior Bowl? Do you see any hidden gems somewhere along the lines? Let me know your rankings in the comment section down below. And as always, go Jets! Jets!